Okay, perfect. All right, guys. So, well, just to start off, my name is Ariana Gonzalez. I work for Paramount Residential Mortgage Group, otherwise known as PRMG. We are your preferred lender. So if you guys ever have any questions, any scenarios, if you need to call me because you have a client right in front of you that you really want to convert into a buyer, you know, you can always go ahead and do so. I do encourage you guys to reach out. That way we can exchange numbers and whatnot. I'm going to be putting my information here on the chat just so that you guys have access to my direct contact. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be putting my phone number. I'm also going to be putting my email address, right? And my phone number, you can call me and you can text me. So don't worry about the time or anything like that, because I know that real estate, you know, it never stops. Okay. So I'm sending that there in the chat. That way you guys have access to that. And another very important thing that, you know, I like to mention to you guys is I like to establish that, that friendship, right? That, that camaraderie that we have as a lender and as agents, because that way I think is the way that you guys are going to learn the most, right? Because it, it feels more of a family, right? Instead of, you know, feeling a little bit shy, feeling like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I should ask, you know, there is no such thing as a dumb question. So I actually encourage you guys always, any question that you may have, send me a text, send me a WhatsApp. That way you guys, you know, have total yeah. access to yeah. whatever it is that's going on in oh, the lending nice. world, any things that have changed, right? Things like that. Okay, now, so nice. as far as the pre-approval process, right, I know a couple of you may be familiar with it, maybe a couple of you haven't been familiar with it, you know, we've been focusing on rentals and things like that, so it, it is a lot to take in, but the way that I like to break everything down is by compartmentalizing it, right, you know, making making a mental note for one type of buyer, making a mental note for another type of buyer, right? That way it makes it a little bit easier for you guys as well to go ahead and identify, okay, this person looks like they would really qualify for, you know, for a pre-approval or, you know, this person, you know, better, let's, let's put them in a plan of action, right? But let's look for a rental, right? So those are the things that I want to help you guys determine, you know, from the initial contact that way, you know, if it is a buyer, we really, really push them and then we motivate them and we encourage them to get started. And if it's a renter, we still motivate them and we still encourage them to get started, but we put them on a plan of action, right? So what we want to do at that point is never tell them no or that they're not approved or not qualified, but what we tell them, hey, let me put you in contact with my lender. She's going to give you that homework, call it, right? Or that plan of action to when you can get pre-approved or when you can buy. So right now let's focus on rentals, but let's still focus on what the process is going to be in the future, okay? So the way that I first started, right? Um, not sure if you guys are familiar with this app. It's called Calendly, right? I'm going to actually put the links to everything on here as well in the chats. That way you guys have access to all of this. So I wanted to show you first, before we start with the PowerPoint, you know, what Calendly is, how do we use it? How can you guys use it? Okay. So let me go ahead and share this other part of the screen. Now, let me make sure you guys are seeing this. Okay, are you guys able to see a screen that has a couple little boxes on it or no? Okay. You see it now? Yes. Let's see. Okay. So guys, if you if you can see the actual screen that I'm talking about, just let me know in the chat so I make I can make sure that you guys are looking at the same thing that I'm looking at. 
just want to yeah. make Hi, Addy. Sure. Yeah, we, I see the initial consultation for purchase. And okay, like a okay. Bunch of boxes, awesome. Right? awesome, awesome, okay. awesome. Okay, great. So, guys, this is this is what I used to get started. Okay, for the most part, you're going to have clients that aren't that techie, right? We all have our older generation, right? That ah, I don't want to use the phone. I don't want to use none of that techie stuff. I want to go in person. So that's fine, right? But this is an approach for you guys also to kind of diversify your audience, right? So what I do with those clients who are techie or maybe, you know, you're at a supermarket or something, something quick, right? That you don't want to stay talking to them too long. I send them this link. The link that I put in the chat, it's going to bring you to this website here, right? So what you do here is it'll take you automatically here. The client, you know, if they speak Spanish, consulta inicial, Para, para comprar, eh, if they speak English, initial consultation for purchase, right? Maybe you have people who just want a follow-up, right? They just want information. So you would send them this link, right? And this is just, you pick a time, they can talk to me, they can call me, just pick my brain, anything, you know, especially those clients that I don't know if I want to get pre-approved or not. I don't know if I want them to pull my credit. Hey, perfect. Here's a, a link for a free console. You can ask my lender, whatever it is that you want to ask them. And then they'll go, they'll pick this, they'll pick a time, and then we'll talk about whatever it is that they want to talk about. But if you do have those clients that are quote unquote, ready to go, right? You send them the link. They're going to go here to initial consultation, right? They'll go to the booking page, right? It'll take you here. You pick a date, right? Let's say you want to talk to me today. Oh, I don't get out of work until, you know, six. Perfect. My lender actually works past six. Why don't you set up a time for 6.30 or 6.45, right? They'll come, they'll pick, very user-friendly, simple. They put their name, their last name, their information, right? They put the best number to contact them, right? Because sometimes we'll get leads or they'll call you from their job or something where it's not a direct approach. So this way they tell you exactly where to contact them. And more important for you guys, right, is who referred you. So they'll put here, you know, this is my cell phone. This is where you can contact me. And Alicia is referring me, right? Because how many times does it happen that you'll send a lead and maybe they don't even mention who you are? It's a lost lead, right? So I think it's very important. Referral is one of the most important techniques in this business. So that's why I made it a thing to make sure that they write where the, the lead is coming from, okay? So that way we're aware and they can fill out this little questionnaire. Um, it's very simple. It's a couple questions, but this helps you guys identify, you know, is this a hot lead for a pre-approval? Is this a warm lead? Um, you know, should we put them on a plan to get there or whatever it is, right? So the questions that I want you guys also, you know, to start familiarizing yourselves with are, you know, are you a first time home buyer, right? That's a very important question because, the minute that a client will tell you that, yes, they are a first-time home buyer, right, they get a little bit excited, right? They get those jitters of, okay, so this is my moment. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, get pre-approved. So psychologically, you want to start with that to encourage them a bit, to get them excited. I, after that, you get into the more serious questions, right? Are you buying by yourself, right? Are you buying with a spouse, maybe with someone else, right? A grandparent or somebody who's helping co-sign, okay? Another thing I like to ask them is what kind of property are they interested in, right? That way for our sake on the lender side, we have an idea, okay, this is a conventional prospect or this is an FHA prospect, you know, depending on what it is that they answer here, okay? So the rest, you know, pretty standard, the two-year history of employment, very important. Anybody who wants to get pre-approved needs to have a two-year history of employment. Doesn't matter what you did, right? As long as there's been two years there. Some exceptions that we make if there's no two-year history of employment is, did they go to school before that? If they did, perfect, justifiable. They couldn't work, they were going to school. Are they working now? Yes, it's perfect, right? So that's one of the main, main pillars of a pre-approval. Are you working, right? And have you been working? After that, you know, comes a little bit more intricate at that point, you know, are you W-2? Are you self-employed? 
So there is a section there in the questionnaire where I, I have them go ahead and let me know if whichever route they are, okay? And then if you notice the questionnaire is more tailored to the client, right? I, instead of me telling them, you know, hey, you're approved for this amount, I position the questions, you know, how much is your desired monthly payment? If you give the clients that control, right, so to speak, they feel less scared. They feel like it's not as, you know, so much a rejection that they're going to get from the bank, right, if they don't get pre-approved, but it's more we are trying to fit their needs. So that's something that I've noticed that works very well when you ask them, hey, what's your budget? For the monthly payment hey what's your budget for your closing costs right so it helps us work with them a little bit more and, and build that trust so that's pretty much what the questionnaire you know entails it's just a little bit of information that that's just so we can get them on the phone and we can try to convert the lead try to get them to send the documents so that we can go ahead and get started okay once that event is scheduled i get a notification right here I'll get a notification, you know, Ariana Gonzalez, it's for an initial contact, it's at 6 p.m. today, and it'll give me the answers of everything that, you know, all the questions I asked, okay? So that way, when I'm speaking to them, I can, you know, revert it off that, make more conversation with them, build more of a relationship, and then get them to trust me enough to send me their documents ASAP, okay? So now, for the most part, that's how I like to practice, you know, my business for the pre-approvals. I know you guys, it's a little bit different, right? Sometimes you meet these people on the fly. Sometimes they give you really big kickback. So it's something more that you have to, in Spanish, we say pasale la mano, right? You have to be a little bit more nice. You have to follow up consistently. And you really have to build that relationship. Some of you guys may even take clients to a showing or two, right? So that you can establish that relationship. And then once, you know, you get that connection and you tell them, hey, look, let's get you pre-approved so that you can make offers on these properties, right? So what I always tell you guys, or what I would like, you know, to, to share with you all is that getting pre-approved is the number one thing to do. In my PowerPoint that, that I'm sharing here, I, I hope, I think you guys can see it. It's still telling me it's sharing the screen, but, from the, the gist of what my PowerPoint states is, you know, you filter the client, which that starts with either in person, you talk to them, you let them know, you get their information, or they do the link that we just spoke about, right? Once that's done, what I do at that point is if I made the contact with them, I go ahead and ask them for their email, or I already have it because they created the link, right? And I'll send them the list. So, that's the first thing that we need in order to issue the pre-approval is make the contact and send the needs list, okay? Depending on what kind of a client it is, I'm either gonna send a needs list for a W-2 employee or I'm gonna send a needs list for a self-employed borrower, right? They're a little bit different only because for self-employed, I'm gonna need to review your personal and your business tax returns, okay? And for W-2, it's, pretty much based on the end of the year W-2s, which you receive, and the pay stubs. Pay stubs are so, so, so important when it comes to a W-2 employee. It's actually the only way that we calculate their income. Some people send us a W-2 and they'll say, hey, you know, divide that by 12. That's how much I made all year. But that's not how you calculate income properly. So you're going to have two two different types of needs lists, right? If you guys want to write this down, W-2s are the last two most recent um, W-2s, right? So right now it's still 19 and 20. In a couple months, right? It's going to be 20 and 21, right? Because we're going to be in 2022. So this whole year that they've worked, that's the new income, okay? Now it's going to be your W-2s, again, your most recent pay stubs, a copy of your ID and your most recent bank statement. So that's going to be the list of documents that you're going to need if you're a regular nine to fiver, you get paid with a pay stub with the taxes being withdrawn. Okay. Now, the other list 
would be for a self-employed borrower, right? Someone who owns their own business or people who get paid cash, right? There's a couple different types of self-employment, which is Schedule C or 1120 or 1065, right? These are all the different kinds of tax forms that you file when you're self-employed. For the most part, we make it simple when we tell people, let me get the last two years of your personal taxes, your business taxes, last three months of your bank statements from the business or from wherever the money is you know, moving in and out from, and a copy of your ID. So those are the two different kinds of lists, guys. You're either a W-2 employee or you're self-employed, okay? Once we have those documents, okay, what I go ahead and I do is first I review, I make sure that we have everything that we need. If anything is missing, I will tell the clients, hey, look, I'm missing this. Please send this over as, as soon as possible, okay? Sometimes they send it the same day, perfect, no interruptions, we proceed. If something's missing and, you know, unfortunately they can't get it over to us until they get home and they look for it, what have you, and it's seven, eight o'clock at night, that's perfectly fine, understandable, but we will review it the next day just because, you know, we were missing that document and we'll consider it a next day review, right? But we take into account, you know, all of the documentation that we have, I'll calculate the income, then we pull the credit, right? One thing that I also, you know, I keep in mind is um, that I've calculated, you know, I'm not going to pull the credit unless the client, you know, allows me to pull it just so that they have an idea of where their score is at or what have you. But I personally don't like to do a hard inquiry if I see that the income is just not there. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll contact the borrower and I'll let them know, hey, is there anybody else that we can add to this application? Because I don't think that with the income that I'm calculating for you, it's a viable amount, right? And that's when the, the flashlights start ringing, right? And they start to think and they start to think to themselves, hmm, who could I add? Who could help me? So that's when the grandparents, the abuelas, all these people start to come out and then we'll add them to the loan. At that point, we pull the credit and perfect. Now we have a viable, you know, pre-approval versus doing the income, putting the credit and then discouraging them and telling them, hey, look, you, you actually don't make enough money to qualify for something alone. You see how different that sounds versus, hey, I noticed that if we add someone else, we're going to better your chances. So that's also something very important in the, in the getting pre-approved process is to always make sure that we're, we're using words of encouragement, right? Because we're pretty much forcing people to give us all of their personal information, you know? So very, very important to make our clients feel, you know, that this is not scary and that we're available at all times and we're here to serve them. Okay. That would be the second thing that I go ahead and I do with the approval process. Aside from that, you know, once we calculate the income, once we pull the credit, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and put everything into our database, which is called Encompass, right? Just to make sure that the system reviews everything, the system reads the credit, the system reads the income that I've calculated. And ultimately, once I run it for the approval, that's what's called your DU. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that term before or not, but it is pretty much the official approval of uh, a loan. Okay, so for the most part, we work with the DU when we're submitting offers, right? When we let people know, hey, look, this is the maximum amount that I'm allowed to qualify you for because this is up to the maximum amount that my DU allowed. So that would be the third part, which I do go ahead and send that along with your estimate and your pre-approval letter. I'll send those three things in an email and I'll copy you guys, of course, as the realtors. And I have I a question. Yeah, of course. Hello? Um, yes. that, what's the difference between pre-qualification and pre-approval? And pre-approval. Like okay. the, the so, credit runs in, in both? So no, biggest, biggest misconception with a pre-qualification, pretty much it is somebody who will tell you what they have on their credit, 
right? They'll let you know, hey, I have a car for 300 bucks a month. I have a couple student loans. I have such and such credit cards, right? So what we do is we take into account those liabilities, right? So I'll make a note, okay, car, $300 a month, student loans, $100 a month, uh, five credit cards, right? A hundred something dollars a month. So what happens at that point is I take into account those liabilities, which is the monthly debts that a client has, right? And then I'll still calculate the income, right? So that I can have my ratios, right? I have the qualifying income and I also have whatever debts they have on their actual, you know, quote unquote, what they have on their report, okay? So that's a pre-qualification. That doesn't require a credit pool. It just, it's word of mouth on what it is that they may or may not have on their credit report, right? What it is that they may or may not make. Sometimes people tell you, oh yeah, I, so especially self-employed borrowers, right? Oh, I, I made 100K, 100K last year. But they won't tell you what the net is, right? That's just the gross. Hello, good afternoon. So a pre-qualification, I always tell everybody, you know, be careful with pre-qualifications because they're point? not a hundred percent. They're not verified information. Yes, Kirby, do you call nineteen or seven because she was trying to talk with you? <laughs> no, I didn't call nobody. Can you call her? I didn't call her. So. No, no, no. She want to talk with you. Okay. I'm but fine. you, you wasn't in the receiving. So. I wasn't receiving. I've been here all, all, all along. In no, I was calling many times. So. <laughs> Call her, please. She wants to talk with you. Okay. All right. Let me see. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how to mute it, guys. Sorry about that. Um. Let me see here. But yeah, Salim. So uh, that's pretty. That's the biggest difference, right? The biggest difference is gonna be, um, you know, pre-qualification. For the most part, it's it's not as verified as, for example, a pre-approval would be. So you don't recommend that we do pre-qualification. You don't Sorry? recommend that we do that. You don't re recommend that we do. Uh, I mean, look, it really it depends on the client because there are some people that just aren't they don't trust easily. So I've had to work a little harder, right, to go with the pre qualification route, knowing that it may be different later when we pull the credit, right. But at least, you know, you're catering to the client, making them feel more comfortable so that they don't go. Away. <laughs> so it, it depends, right? If you have a difficult client, it happened to me today, actually. I have a deal right now with, um, it's a for sale by owner. So the sellers are directly in contact with the buyers. The seller is selling this home and he would like to buy another property. So I told him, okay, perfect, Mr. Seller, you know, before you go and start submitting offers with your attorney, I think I should pre-approve you. No, 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 no. I, I know I'm approved. I'm good. I know I'm approved. Okay. You know you're approved. When you find the house, give me a call because I'm going to need to pre to actually pre-approve you because you're going to need a pre-approval letter. You're going to need a DU. So it, it depends, right? You don't want to always create those bad habits with your clients. You always want to educate them first and let them know why it's important to get the pre-approval. Hey, look, what Credit Karma is telling you may not be accurate. You're going to risk, you know, being qualified for something that you're not really approved for, right? If you educate them at first, then they might just let you, you know, pull through with pulling the credit and doing things the right way. But if they're giving you the kickback and you don't want to lose them, then you know, at the end of the day, we're both in sales, right? It's the client. Yeah, we have to service the client. So I wouldn't recommend you always do the pre-qualification. Try to go for the pre-approval always. But again, if you are really trying to win over the client, then absolutely go, go ahead and try and let them know, hey, look, my lender can do free consults, free pre-queue or pre-approval if you want to go ahead and take the, the official step. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Did you guys have any other questions or anything like that? Have you guys had any scenarios where maybe, um, you know, the client wants to go, oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry about that. Um, today I had one of my realtors, actually, she mentioned to me that she, she's been getting a lot of Indian leads that they want to spend about $2,500, $3,000 a month on, on rent. 
So I told her that's that's absurd. You know, that's that's a mortgage of over three hundred and seventy five, four hundred thousand dollars. You know, almost five hundred thousand dollars. So what do you guys do to practice, you know, converting those rental leads into buyers? Do you guys have anything in specific that you do or do you want any tips from me or, or how, how do you guys handle that? No, I mean, if you guys haven't experienced that yet, that's fine. It is, it's something common that you see, right? You're, you're always going to get people that want to rent, right? And they can afford to rent, uh, you know, these crazy figures. So what I would do, right, just a little friendly tip is ask them, you know, hey, guys, that's, um, you know, that's, that's quite a budget that you guys have, right, for, for what you're going to pay for rent. Have you guys considered maybe buying to, to pay exactly the same, if not less? for something that you own. That's that's the approach that you know I've been talking to to most of my realtors about to see how we can go ahead and convert those leads. If you guys want to go ahead and you know maybe take a couple tips or or pointers or or again, if you run into the scenario and you need a little bit of advice, you guys can always contact me directly even if you're in that specific moment, you know, send me a text, uh, send me a WhatsApp, call me, Ari, Ariana. I have, I have, a, I think I have a lead, you know, please let me know if you're available. Let's talk to them now, you know, and I'll be happy to walk you guys through it. Does anyone have any other questions or anything like that or no? No, we're good. All right, you guys. Well, don't be shy. I'm going to go ahead and put my information on here again, just so that you have it, right? Weekends, nights, it doesn't matter. You know, I know that the real estate industry never sleeps. So by all means, you can contact me directly. I'm putting my cell phone information here. And I'm also putting my email in case, you know, you may have a lead that you already spoke to. Maybe they sent you some kind of document or something, right? Then you can go ahead and, you know, send me a quick email as well. Okay, so if you guys don't have any questions or any scenarios or anything like that, then I am going to also be having another training, right? I'm going to take advantage and let you guys know as well. So this Friday, I'm actually going to be talking about getting from the contract to the closing table okay there's going to be a lot of fun facts of you know what happens once we issue the pre-approval right how it, i can help you guys secure those offers right how we can orient the client on what's going to happen right because once we get the contract it's a whole new world okay link to pre-approval questionnaire gotcha um so it's going to be it's going to be a more in deep kind of class. OK, and we're pretty much going to go over, you know, from the second that they get the contract to ordering the appraisal. What does title even mean? What kind of insurances are out there? Um, escrow deposits, inspections, everything, everything, everything that has to do with the actual you know, contract process. I'm going to go ahead and help you guys with that as well. So that's going to be this Friday. Okay. I'm still debating if I'm going to do it in person or if I'm going to do it over Zoom, I'll probably go ahead and, you know, ask for a little poll on, on Instagram. I'll go ahead and share my Instagram with you guys as well. That way you can have access to that and see if I do it in person or if we just do another Zoom like this, okay? But that's gonna be this Friday, December 3rd from the 6th until 7 p.m., okay? Well, guys, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for staying on with me this time. And again, any questions, please, please, please reach out. We're very, very friendly, me and my team, okay? Okay, guys, bueno, have a good day, okay? Yeah.